Nicholas Tavalich and Companions, Martyrs First Order. The spiritual sons of St. Francis have been the church's official custodians of the holy places in the Holy Land ever since 1335. Pope Clement VI formally appointed them the guardians of the Holy Sepulchre in 1342. By 1399, they had friaries on Mount Sion, at the Holy Sepulchre, and in Bethlehem. In 1391, four of the 17 Franciscans who were in Jerusalem at that time died as martyrs of the Catholic faith. One of their confreres, an eyewitness, wrote a detailed account of their heroic death, and this was sent to Europe by the Father Guardian of Mount Zion, Father Gerald Calvet of Aquitaine, with a confirming letter of his own. The four martyrs were Fathers Nicholas Tavalich, Deodat of Rodez, Peter of Narbonne, and Stephen of Cuneo. They are the first and the only ones of a total of 158 Franciscan martyrs in the Holy Land who have been canonized. And it was only recently, on June 21, 1970, that Pope St. Paul VI solemnly enrolled them among the saints of the Church. St. Nicholas Tavalich, who is also the first Croatian to be canonized by the Holy See, unless St. Jerome was one, was the son of a noble and wealthy family in Šibenik, Dalmatia. He was born in that city on the east coast of the Adriatic Sea about 1340. As a young man, he joined the Franciscans in his native city, and after his ordination to the priesthood, he went to Bosnia, where Franciscans from various provinces were engaged in missionary work. Here he labored with considerable success for 12 years among the heretical Bogomils, or Cathari. Among his fellow missionaries in Bosnia was Father Deodat of Rodez in Aquitaine, southwestern France. About 1383, Father Nicholas and Deodat asked to be sent to the Holy Land Mission, and the request was granted. Like their confreres in Jerusalem, they devoted themselves to a life of prayer, to the care of the holy places, and to the sacred ministry among Christian pilgrims and merchants. For some years, they also studied the Arab language. In 1391, Fathers Nicholas and Deodat and two others decided to make a bold joint effort to convert the Muslims to Christianity, even if it would cost them their lives. All four were, in fact, desirous of winning the martyr's crown. The other two friars were Father Peter of Narbonne in Provence, France, and Father Stephen of Cuneo, Italy. The latter had been a missionary in Corsica before he came to the Holy Land. They prepared themselves carefully and prayerfully for the dangerous and difficult task they had set for themselves and wrote an Arabic address in a Roman transliteration. On the morning of November 11, 1391, they left their friary and went to the principal mosque which the Muslims had built on the site of Solomon's temple. November 11th was the festival of Bayram, the fourth day of the so-called Id el Korban, when the Muslims were found in great numbers out on the streets, extending greetings to one another. The four friars arrived at the mosque at nine in the morning, but were not permitted to enter. They then asked to see the Qadi, magistrate, and were taken to his house. There each one unrolled his parchment and read his address. They pointed out that Muhammad was not one of God's prophets, as were Moses and Elijah and Elisha, and that all men, to be eternally saved, must accept the gospel of Jesus, the Savior of the world. While they were presenting the claims of the Christian religion, a large crowd of Muslims gathered at, gathered at the house. The Qadi demanded that they retract what they had said and accept the Muslim religion. This they firmly refused to do, 
and the Muslims mercilessly beat them until they fell to the ground. After they regained consciousness, they were cruelly scourged and then cast into a dungeon. On November 14th, they were taken from jail to the place of execution, where a big fire was started. The emir, or governor, of Hermine, Jerusalem, and Hebron presided. Present were some 30,000 Muslims, as well as, as well as 12 Franciscans, and a considerable number of Christian merchants and pilgrims. Once more, the martyrs professed their faith in Christ and refused to become Mohammedans. The Muslims then fell upon them and hacked them to pieces with their swords and scimitars. The dismembered bodies were thrown into the fire, but the flames did not consume them, though the blaze was repeatedly started anew. Under cover of darkness, the Muslims later buried the remains of the martyrs. They are now Saints Nicholas Tavalich and Companions, and the Franciscan calendar commemorates them by memorial. The Only Saving Church Consider how earnestly Saints Nicholas and his three companions strove to bring the good news of our Lord to the Muslims. Jesus came into this world to save us, he established the church which he founded on Peter, the prince of the apostles, as the only institution for leading men to salvation, so that all who are faithful to it are saved. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16:16. 16, 16. But Christ instituted only one church and turns away from those who refuse to be members of it. He who will not hear the church, let him be to thee as a heathen and a publican. Matthew 18, 17. The Roman Catholic Church then, with the Pope at its head as the successor of St. Peter, is the only prescribed way that leads to salvation. That is to say, it is the only saving church. Are all those then who profess another belief condemned by the Catholic Church? If they acknowledge that the Catholic Church has the true faith of Christ and yet will not accept it, then they will be condemned. Christ himself pronounced this judgment. He who will not believe will perish, Mark 16:16. 16, 16. But he who lives in good faith and professes a belief which he erroneously considers to be the religion of God through no fault of his own can be saved. If he observes the commandments of God and cooperates with the grace of God, or if he regains God's grace by perfect contrition, he will not be lost. Those who die in the state of grace are saved. Those who die in mortal sin are damned. But we should pity his error, and we, but we may not condemn him. No one will be condemned by God except through his own fault. Consider the duties that are incumbent on us who are children of the only saving church. We should thank God often and fervently for this grace. We may not ascribe to it any merits on our part, but must acknowledge with the apostles, by the grace of God, I am what I am. 1 Corinthians 15.10. We must moreover be on our guard never in any way to separate ourselves from the true fold of Christ. Out of love for souls, we must also pray for our erring brethren that they may arrive at the knowledge of the true faith and participation in its treasure of grace. The heart of the good shepherd desires this, for he has said, Other sheep I have who are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John 10, 16.
Prayer of the Church. O God, who didst glorify Saints Nicholas and companions by zeal in spreading the gospel, and by the palm of martyrdom, grant an answer to our prayer that we may merit to walk in their footsteps, and through their intercession, deserve to receive the victor's reward of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. St. Nicholas Tavalich and Companions. Pray for us.